In this tutorial, I'll be going through various ways of interacting with cells in a workbook. If you're new to VBA, I recommend checking out our beginner tutorials, in particular the introduction to the Visual Basic Editor, as it goes through some fundamentals which will make following this tutorial easier. The first thing I'm going to do is open up the Visual Basic Editor by pressing Alt and F11. Once it's open, I'm going to insert a new module by right clicking on the project name here, going down to insert and selecting module. Now in this code window area here, we need to give our macro a name, so I'm just going to type in sub, then a space, then cell work, and a set of empty parentheses. I'm just going to press enter. Now that we have this groundwork done, we can start learning how to interact with cells using VBA. One of the most basic things we can do with cells using VBA is to enter a value into it. One of the easiest ways to do this is to enter a value into the active cell or relative to the active cell. If we go back to Excel by pressing the button here, you will notice there is a flick back border around cell A1. This indicates that cell A1 is the active cell. If a different cell is activated, single click on cell A1 to activate it. Now, I'm going to go back to the Visual Basic Editor by pressing Alt and F11. Now, to enter a value into this cell, all we need to type in is active cell, followed by a dot operator, and then value. This is telling Excel that we're interested in changing the value of the active cell. Now, we just need to type in an equal sign operator, and then the value we want to change the cell to, which is 1. So I'm just going to type in a 1. Now, I'm going to run this macro to test it. You can do this by pressing F5 or clicking on the little play button here. I'm going to go ahead and press F5 now. It may seem like nothing has happened, but if we go back to Excel by clicking the button here, you'll notice that cell A1 now contains a number 1, just as we intended it to. However, we don't always want to work with the active cell as this would limit the type of applications we could create. One way to get around this is to work relative to the active cell. And I'm going to go through two ways of doing this. Firstly, we'll need to go back to the Visual Basic Editor by pressing Alt and F11. Now, the first way of working relative with the active cell is to tell Excel to activate a different cell relative to the starting cell and enter a value into the cell just as we did previously. So press Enter to get to a new line and then type in active cell followed by another dot operator. This time, instead of telling Excel we're interested in the value, I'm going to tell it to offset the cell. I want to select cell A2, so as cell A1 is the active cell, I need to go one row down and zero columns across. To do this, type in an open bracket, followed by the number of rows we want to go down, which is one, followed by a comma. Then we need to enter the number of columns we want to go across, which is 0, followed by a close bracket. Now, this is only referencing the cell one row down from the active cell, not activating it. To activate it, type in another dot operator and then activate. Now that cell A2 is activated, we can use the same command we used earlier to enter a value into it. So, I'm just going to go to the next line and then type in active cell again then another dot operator, and then value. And then another equal sign operator, and then the value we want this cell to equal, which this time, I'm going to make 2. Now, once again, I'm going to run this macro by pressing F5, and then go back to Excel. You'll notice two things here. Firstly, cell A2 now contains the value 2, just as we planned. However, you'll also notice that cell A2 now has a thick back border around it, indicating that it is the active cell, so we can tell that our method works. However, we can simplify this a bit. Firstly, I'm going to delete the values we've entered into these cells, and then reselect cell A1. Then I'm going to go back to the Visual Basic Editor by pressing Alt and F11. This time, I'm going to go through a slightly different method of entering a value relative to the starting cell. I want to enter the number 3 into cell A3, which is one row down from the active cell. So just like last time, I'm going to go to the next row and then type in active cell, followed by a dot operator and then offset. 
an open bracket, 1, comma, and 0, and finally a closed bracket. However, this time, instead of activating this cell, I'm going to tell Excel to enter a value into it without activating it. To do this, just type in a dot operator, followed by value, then the equal sign operator, and finally the value we want to enter into it, which is 3. Now, I'm going to run this macro and go back to Excel to see if it works. You'll notice that a number has indeed been entered into cell A3, but the thick black border is still around cell A2, indicating that an active cell was never changed and our macro works as planned. We've just used cell referencing to enter values into a cell. However, we can also use cell referencing to pull values from a cell and then store this value in a variable. So I'm just going to go back to the Visual Basic Editor and delete everything between these two sub-statements. But I'm going to leave the numbers 1 to 3 in cells A1 to A3 in Excel. If you followed our other tutorials, you will know that if you want to make a variable called test variable equal to number 5, all we need to do in is type in the variable name, which is test variable, and then the equal sign operator, followed by the value we want to assign to the variable, which is 5. Well, to assign the value of a cell to a variable, we use a similar process, but instead of inserting the number we want the variable to equal, we insert the cell location. Now, we could do this by using active cell and offset code we learned earlier, but I'm going to go for a different way to do this, which is to use absolute references. So, the first thing I'm going to do is delete the 5 here. To reference the cell in VBA, we need to tell Excel to move down a hierarchy from the largest object to the one we're interested in, which is in this case is the individual cell. The biggest object is the Excel application itself. So the first thing we need to do is type in application. The next object down is the workbook. So firstly, I need to type in a dot operator, followed by workbooks, and then the name of the workbook in a set of parentheses and quotation marks, which in my case is book one. Next down is the worksheet, which in this case is worksheet 1. So I'm going to type in another dot operator, and then worksheets, and then a 1 in a set of parentheses. Finally, we get to the cell operator. If you've worked with Excel previously, you've probably referenced cells when using functions in Excel, such as the sum function. You can use a similar way to reference cells in VBA. To do this, First type in another dot operator, and then range. And then, in a set of parentheses and quotation marks, type the cell location of the cell you're interested in. This could be cells such as A1, or a range of cells such as A1 to B10, by typing in A1 colon B10. I'm just going to reference cell A1 for now. Now that we have told Excel to go down from the application object down to the workbook, then the worksheet, and finally to the cell we are interested in, we just need to tell Excel which property of this cell we are interested in. In this case, we want the cell value, so type in another dot operator and then value. This is technically the correct way to reference a cell using Excel, but this is quite a long statement to be typing every time we want to reference a cell. To speed it up a little, we can use a little shortcut. If this cell we are interested in is an active worksheet of the active workbook, we can delete all of this before the range statement. This will make Excel automatically assume the cell we're interested in is in the active worksheet. To test that we have successfully stored the value from cell A1 into a variable called test variable, I'm going to show you one more way of referencing the cell and an insert the value stored in the variable into this cell. On the next line, I'm just going to type in cells followed by an open bracket. Now, instead of putting in a cell reference, such as C1, like we did with the range command, for the cell command, we need to put in a number of the row the cell we're interested in is in, followed by a comma, and the number of the column the cell we're interested in is in. So, as I want to enter a value into cell C1, I need to type in a 1, as it is in the first row, and a comma, and then a 3, 
as it is in the third column. Now, I just need to put in a close bracket, followed by a dot operator, and then value, and an equal sign. Now, I want cell C1 to equal the value we stored in test variable from cell A1, so I'm just going to type in test variable here. Now, we could test our macro now, but there's one more interesting thing I want to show you about referencing cells in this way. As we're using numbers here to reference the cell, we can replace these numbers with variables. So, as test variable should equal the number 1. I'm going to delete the number 1 here and type in test variable instead. Now, I'm just going to run the macro by pressing F5 and then go back to Excel. And there you go, the number from cell A1 has successfully been entered into cell C1.